Here is another Lander model that we had. In order to absorb the shock, we've used springs made out of index cards. Okay, we have our two astronauts inside. Again, we're gonna start off with two feet for this initial landing. The bottom of the lander will be aligned with a two foot mark. Okay, and then we'll drop it. Okay, and that um, failed the test right away because the astronauts bounced out. Remember, we want them to stay safely in the rocket. Uh, they did stay in one piece. Uh, they lost a few crumbs here and there. But again, because they bounced out of the rocket, they already failed. Now, remember, the students have to make observations about what happened and try to troubleshoot and figure out why the astronauts may have flown out or why it failed at two feet. Uh, they should also consider what they can do to improve their model or fix that issue. One thing they might say is to get rid of some of the springs, the index card springs, so maybe instead of having four, they only have two and there wouldn't be too much bounce upon impact. Um, we have uh, the rocket body, and then we used pipe cleaners um, that are bent and some jumbo marshmallows to maybe absorb the energy when it hits the ground. So again, inside we have our two astronauts, and we want to make sure that they're safe. Remember, for the constraints of this test, we have to make sure that if we drop it from two feet, the astronauts, one, will not bounce out of the shuttle body, and also they are going to remain intact. We don't want them to crack apart and die. So we have the measuring tape um, to measure two feet for us. We're going to fold the rocket so the bottom of the rocket sits at two feet, and then we will drop. And to see if our test worked, our astronauts have to have stayed in the rocket, which they did, and they have to be in one piece. So for this model, both of our astronauts survived. Now, if your test works and the astronauts survive, or if your students are doing really well and their astronauts are surviving with all of the models for um, two feet, you can make it a little bit more challenging and keep on increasing it. So will they also survive at three feet and four feet? Um, let's actually just test this successful model. I'm gonna increase the drop height to 
to three feet to the same astronauts. And let's see if all the energy will be absorbed or all the shock will be absorbed this time around. So again, this is three feet. Okay, so it passed the first test. The astronauts stayed in the rocket. They didn't fly out, which is good. Um, let's look inside. One astronaut survived, but his co-astronaut did not survive. He broke in half. So this model did very well at two feet. It did not survive three feet. Okay, so my team is on a mission to meet this challenge and meet it successfully. So we made one last modification to our shuttle design um, and that was just in the stabilizing pipe cleaners here. We just increased the angle of um, how we bent them. So we're hoping that this is going to work and it's going to keep our astronauts safe as they land from outer space. So again we're going to drop them from two feet. We're going to hope they stay in the rocket and survive. Oh! No! They didn't stay in. Okay, one more time. It's okay, folks. This is science. Okay. I think it's gonna work this time. I think it's gonna work. Two feet. Oh! I think we did it. Okay, so it was a close call there, but they stayed within the rocket. They didn't bounce out. And yay! Those astronauts are safe and in one piece. So it took five trials, um, but after we analyzed the problem and we redesigned and we rebuilt and we retested, we were finally successful in our challenge and that is the engineering design process in action.